Welcome to Radio on Fire, home of the Diamond K Show. Diamond K in the house. And now for your urban news and entertainment report. Here's your host, Diamond K. Oh my goodness. It's the Diamond K Show. The nation's largest credit union rejected more than half of its black conventional mortgage applications. So uh, this is very, very troubling, and the nation is uh, is looking at Navy Federal Credit Union and their reported practices. Of course, they are trying to deny uh, this or try to say that it's a misunderstanding. The widest disparity in mortgage approval rates between white and black borrowers of any major lender. Um, This trend, according to reports, uh, CNN reported this among others, uh, this trend reached new heights last year. So Navy Federal Credit Union, many of you are familiar with that, uh, lends to military service members and veterans approved more than 75% of the white borrowers. Now, they applied for new conventional home purchases in 2022. According to recent data, which is available from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, you can look this up yourself, less than 50% of the black borrowers who applied for the same type of loan were not approved. That is uh, disturbing information and, uh, you know, I, I hear black folks talking about, uh, this Navy Federal all the time. Many banks also approved white applicants at higher rates than black borrowers. Nearly 29% of this, uh, point gap in Navy Federal's approval rates, uh, was the widest of any of the 50 lenders that originate uh, most of the mortgage loans that took place last year. You know, this is definitely something that we have to look at, this uh, disparity that remains. The black and the white applicants who had similar incomes uh, and uh, the debt-to-income ratios. Notably, Navy Federal approved a slightly higher percentage of applicants from white borrowers making less than 62000 a year than it did of black borrowers making 140000 or more. So let's, let's say that again. Navy Federal approved a slightly higher percentage of applicants uh, and, and the applications from white borrowers who were making less than sixty-two k a year than it did of black borrowers who were making... Twice that, over twice that, one hundred and forty thousand a year and more. So uh, CNN performed this uh, deep statistical analysis and found that the black applicants to Navy Federal were more than twice as likely to be denied as the white applicants, even when more than a dozen different variables, including income debt-to-income ratio, property value, down payment percentage, and neighborhood characteristics were all the same. This is very troubling. This is very troubling. And, of course, as I said, Navy Federal is uh, is denying that, uh, you know, it's not right. Uh, uh, it's You're reading the data wrong. Uh, but we would never do this, you know, th- th- that whole thing. Uh, As you can expect now, this Virginia-based Navy Federal uh, was originally founded in 1933 to serve Navy employees. It is now open to all members of the Armed Forces, Department of Defense personnel, veterans, and their relatives. It has about 13 million members and more than $165 billion in assets. So this is uh, something that they're going to have to clean up. Something that uh, definitely it is a PR nightmare and uh, something that we're going to continue to follow. You have comments on that uh, at the Diamond K Show 
uh, of course, on all social media uh, at the Diamond K Show, Radio on Fire TV, and uh, if you want to email me, DJ Diamond K at Gmail dot com. We have been following this uh, this next story, Rudy Giuliani. Some folks held him at one time in high regard, uh, but he has fallen and he has fallen far. So the jury has ordered Rudy Giuliani to pay $148 million to the election workers that he defamed. Uh, he is still defaming these ladies, a mother and daughter. And Giuliani does not have a lot of money left, uh, not a lot to lose. Reputation is uh, in the drain. Uh, he's not able to pay a lot of things that he owes. Uh, but uh, Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shea Moss, wrongfully accused by Rudy Giuliani of having tried to steal votes from Donald Trump in Georgia were awarded these damages by federal court in DC. Now, uh, the trick here is trying to get him to pay. He owes a lot of people. As I said, Giuliani has fallen far, uh, but on Friday he was ordered to pay $148 million to the two former Georgia election workers who said that he destroyed their reputation with the lies that he told. Um, and these lies were related to them trying to help steal the 2020 election from Donald Trump. So the judge in federal district court on um, uh, Friday in D.C. had already ruled that Giuliani had defamed the two workers. The jury had been asked to decide only the amount of the damages. And the jury awarded this uh, to Miss Freeman and Miss Moss a combined $75 million in punitive damages. It also ordered Giuliani to pay uh, compensatory damages uh, in the tune of $16.2 million to Miss Freeman and $16.9 million to Miss Moss, as well as $20 million to each of them for emotional suffering. Now, where this money is coming from is not quite clear. Uh, they're saying that Giuliani is trying to hide money and, uh, and all of that. Uh, so uh, it will uh, continue. Uh, of course, we know Giuliani helped uh, lead Trump's effort to remain in office after his defeat in 2020. Uh, he has endured a string of legal and financial setbacks. He does not have what he used to have. Uh, he said that he does not regret a damn thing. Said this outside the courtroom, suggesting that he would appeal and that uh, he was <laughs> he stood by his assertions. He's not taking any of this back. Um, outside of the courtroom, inside the courtroom is a whole different story. Uh, but, uh, uh, this guy, uh, his net worth unknown, uh, he refuses to comply with the court required, um, steps to provide that information. And a, a attorney familiar with his legal situation said that after the verdict that Mr. Giuliani was likely to file for bankruptcy protection. Uh, but because the damages he owes Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss are considered, um, uh, intentional tort. A uh, bankruptcy is not going to erase the liability. So he can file for it all he wants. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure that it's going to be, uh, very helpful. He's trying to sell his, uh, his condo, his house, whatever. Uh, he's trying to scrape up money. He owes a lot of folks money. He wasn't even able to pay a phone bill too at one time. So I, I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, but, uh, Giuliani is definitely a, uh, piece of crap. And he deserves everything he's getting because he's a liar. 
because he's a liar. And uh, just his yeah, the way that he's been moving uh, since he's aligned himself with Trump, even before that, it is uh, it, very unsavory. And uh, this was at one point, some people called him America's mayor. Now he is just another loser, 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 loser. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, of course. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, threads at The Diamond K Show, RadioOnFire.tv. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, DJ Diamond K on YouTube. We post content there daily. Uh, and anywhere you get your podcast, just search The Diamond K Show. So this story is, it is disturbing. It is, it is disturbing. Um, really, really sad about this. Now, uh, according to reports, uh, police say that Chance um, Comanche and his girlfriend face an open murder charge for the killing of a 23-year-old woman whose remains were found in the desert. Damn. Now, this is an XG League player, uh, and uh, he had made one appearance uh, for Portland, uh, but he is in this this feeder this this feeder league, this feeder um, NBA team. So, um, and they call it a a G League Kings G League player. So he's facing murder charges. Uh, and his girlfriend after the death of this young lady. So uh, I don't know how she got mixed up with this pair. Uh, but the body remains of this young lady were found. And they were um, identified. And, you know, it... it I mean, I don't want to say he's had a promising career. I mean, I guess he his career did have some prom, promise, promise uh, because he was playing for a, um, a feeder league. This um, this you know feeder league. Um, so earlier this month, uh, this open murder charge in the death of um, Mariana Rogers in Las Vegas happen so this former player um and as i said this this is a, a sacramento's king g league's affiliate he was arrested by the fbi on friday now facing an open murder charge in the connection uh, of the death he's 27 years old and after a first degree kidnapping warrant was reportedly issued in las vegas on friday he was taken into custody in Sacramento County, California. Then uh, on Sunday, the Las Vegas police said in a statement that Comanche and his girlfriend, uh, Sakira Hardin, were facing an open murder charge in the death of this woman. Now, the case in question reportedly concerns uh, this 23-year-old medical assistant from Washington State. Her loved ones said that she was last seen on December the 6th during a visit to Las Vegas with friends. The Stockton Kings played in Nevada, this G League, on December the 5th, the day before her reported disappearance. Now, Roger's remains were found in uh, a desert area outside of Las Vegas, according to police. It is unclear what led to her death specifically, though the police said that Rogers and um, uh, Hardin had a prearranged meeting. It's a prearranged meeting. Uh, the case in question, uh, it, it is... Uh, it is, it, it, it is very stunning. So her remains were found in the desert, and um, the girlfriend uh, is 19. 
and she was also arrested on the kidnapping charges. Uh, now, her her arrest happened two days before uh, Comanche was arrested, and the remains um, uh, she remains in jail. So uh, this is uh, we're going to continue to to follow this. Um, the initial criminal complaint reportedly claimed that the girlfriend held or detained Rogers against her will for the purpose of killing her and or inflicting bodily harm. Um, Hardin also faces an unrelated theft charge in a separate case on an allegation of stealing at least one Rolex watch. So uh, she is definitely unsavory. Um, Comanche is reportedly expected in Sacramento County Court on tomorrow, and he's going to have a preliminary hearing on December the 28th. So he is uh, six foot 10, 210 pounds. He's a big guy. Uh, appeared in one NBA game playing for the Portland Trail Blazers last season, a two year player at Arizona. He went undrafted in 2017 and spent time in this G League. Um, so, uh, you know, they have dropped him. I don't want nothing else to do with him. The uh, the team that he played for, the Stockton Kings, announced Friday that they had released him, but did so with no additional details. Uh, bad news, bad publicity. Uh, this guy and his girlfriend are going down. Uh, so definitely uh, thoughts and prayers to the family of the deceased. We're going to continue to follow this story uh, as it unfolds. We'll do this a quick break, and then we'll be back with more of the show. You listen to the Diamond K Show, uh, RadioOnFire.tv. You want to get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Hit me up on all social media at the Diamond K Show. Now on YouTube. We're posting mixes, we post clips of the show, we post full episodes of the show, and so much more. DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, many of you remember a few years back when Meek Mill was going through all that he was going through in uh, the Pennsylvania legal system. Well, recently, last week, Pennsylvania Governor Shapiro signed probation reforms, which were inspired by Philly rapper Meek Mill's imprisonment. Now, he has been vocal about that. And um, five years ago, Meek Mill was sent to prison for popping a wheelie on a dirt bike. You remember that. Now, Governor Josh Shapiro signed reforms to Pennsylvania's probation system that advocates say will prevent similar injustices for hundreds of thousands of people. We called uh, a foul on uh, on that probation situation. Now, this legislation was passed. Last Wednesday in the state house and Senate, and it limits when a person serving probation can be sent to prison for a technical violation, such as uh, the infraction that led to uh, the judge sentencing Meek Mill to two to four years behind bars back in 2017. Of course, Meek Mill very um, involved in this. And uh, it even became emotional uh, during that. So Meek Mill was obviously an established artist uh, at that time. It called his friend Michael Rubin to go to court with him the day that he was sentenced. And um, I think that it's definitely a full circle moment. Um, they said that uh, we all learned from Meek's case because it shined a light on the injustices in our probation system, how someone could be sentenced to prison for years for not committing a crime, but for just a technical violation of a long probation. The governor said a bill signing um, 
uh, he said this at the bill signing ceremony. So uh, Meek has come so far uh, since then. And um, I am, I'm glad that one, he was there, he was involved. I'm glad that um, this reform has taken place because it was definitely overdue. Now Meek spoke tearfully at times about the decade he spent on probation and in and out of prison, risking violations to visit his son and mother in New Jersey and, and just his whole plight. Um, so uh, I'm definitely happy for him. And, and a lot of folks are. Um, it is a, a Senate bill um, eight three eight that Shapiro signed on Friday and it creates a uh, presumption that probation terms end after two years for misdemeanors and four years for felonies uh, or after half has been served if that is the shorter amount of time. Uh, so uh, shout out to the governor, shout out to Meek Mill and all those working with him on uh, the important, important work. Five years after Meek Mill was sent to prison for that that popping that wheelie, here we are. Uh, Meek is with a Judge uh, the Governor uh, Josh Shapiro signing reforms to the probation system. Um, so advocates are happy, and and they said that this is going to prevent further injustices. And uh, hopefully this is just one step in the right direction, one step forward to try to clean some of this stuff up. You are listening to the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire uh, TV, radio on fire. We are here weekdays. And, um, you know, this is... uh, this is just a, a, a weird story um, out of D.C. So uh, police say that a uh, 85-year-old man killed his wife in a fight over pancakes. So uh, this guy stabbed his 81-year-old wife. Uh, the guy's name is Stephen Swartz, and he told detectives that he loved the woman for 40 years. But for whatever reason, he became so angry with her, so mad at her, that he killed her. And, you know, it it is a very disturbing thing. So they were in their D.C. home last weekend. He told a homicide detective that he stabbed her with a carving knife during an argument over whether he should have pancakes for breakfast. Um, This is all according to the affidavit. And uh, he lived with his wife, his wife, Sharon. Uh, They lived in Northwest DC. Now said that he had lost weight in recent months because of physical and uh, mental disorders that his wife thought it would be good for him to eat more. Um, So, you know, there's definitely some mental things going on here. Uh, He indicated that he lost 45 to 50 pounds in the hospital and that his wife wanted him to get back to 180 pounds. Um, This uh, uh, report says that Swartz told... um, his wife, his wife was a was a bit of a taskmaster, uh, but she was doing it for his benefit. And uh, we've all seen maybe a, an older guy who's having some health issues. And his wife or, or or woman in his life is trying to put him on the right track, and sometimes they can be a little little heavy handed. Um, but she loved him, and you know just wanted the best for him. Uh, but uh, according to him, she was a task master. So Sunday morning when his wife asked him if he was going to have breakfast, according to the affidavit, uh, Swartz replied that he had 
a quarter of a Krispy Kreme donut the day before, and he indicated that he would try to eat a pancake with not too much syrup, but he changed his mind and argument ensued. Uh, the next thing he heard was a plate crashing against the wall. According to the affidavit, he reached and grabbed a carving knife from the holder. Neighbor heard the woman scream in the house, called for help. Police arrived and they found her body near the front door. She had been stabbed once in the back, according to the autopsy. The blade had pierced her heart. Just a a, a sad situation. Um, and uh, police said that uh, Stephen Swartz was clutching a knife and would not let go of it until the officer stunned him with a taser. He was taken to the hospital for where, what the police said was a self-inflicted stab wound. And... Um, uh, Swartz, who said his mental problems include depression, paranoia, uh, but um, he's charged with second degree murder. Uh, he appeared Thursday in Superior Court uh, and was ordered held pending a January 2nd preliminary hearing. Um, so sad situation there, sad situation. Uh, those who need help. Um, often resist that help. And this seems like one of those situations where, you know, um, a guy is, is resisting the help uh, from his loved one. Sad story there. So according to TMZ, Darius McCary, uh, Eddie Winslow, right? <laughs> he was arrested last month for failure to pay child support. He's arrested again. So you remember him from Family Matters. Uh, his dad had two daughters, one son. He was booked on November 27th on a felony count of failure to pay child support. And uh, if you go on our social media at the Diamond K shows, folks are just uh, arguing about this. All all kind of um, different takes on uh, McQuarrie and this debacle. Some people don't think that guys should be locked up for uh, failing to pay child support. A lot of folks are saying, you know, how can you pay the child support if you are incarcerated? Um, and, um, you know, I see a lot of women with, uh, you know, the opposite thought. Um, but, um, this, this actor, uh, this is not the first time. So he, he knew that this, this unpaid child support was an issue. As I said, he arrested once again for failing to keep up with these payments. So, he was taken into custody back in November because he owed $52,788 as of March the 12th, uh, 2019. So he pled not guilty, but was still, uh, still asked to pay bond, uh, $13,000 in bond. Um, but, uh, he reportedly is still, uh, behind bars, he is the father of two daughters and a son. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's just like, you know, he knows that he has to pay, right? We're, you know, this is not a, a a surprise to him or or anybody. Uh, so what should be the what, what should be the penalty for failing to pay child support? Uh, some guys feel as though they shouldn't even have to pay. And, uh, and and some women want too much damn stuff. Now, uh, some are reporting, I guess it's being reported now, that the actor is uh, being uh, monitored by a GPS device. Now, his uh, reported first arrest was in 2015 for his failure to keep up with child support payments and telling the judge that he wasn't making any money. The former actor stated that he had only made $500 that year 
and owed the IRS 90000 So um, this this former actor or current actor, um, he, he is uh, uh, just somebody that has been in all kind of uh, trouble uh, over the years filing restraining orders against girls. And, and uh, you remember that debacle that uh, happened um, with the was it Sydney star, <laughs> you know, uh, but child support is one of those things that the, the children need it. Obviously uh, men and women have fussed about it and, and will continue to fuss about it for years and years. So we're going to see what's going on uh, in this story. Hopefully, uh, Darius will get his uh, self together and um, uh, you know do something something better something uh, that can be <laughs> respected because uh, it just it just doesn't look good uh, for this guy right now does not look good um, but Lamborghini has uh, uh, really they're doing something different trying something new, uh, and uh, I'm actually happy to report this. So Lamborghini has introduced a four-day work week for its production workers. Uh, They are, uh, you know, at the head of the class here, trailblazing. So they reached this deal with the unions, and uh, this four-day work week, uh, was announced by uh, Lamborghini last week, and the agreement achieves a reduction in working hours without a reduction in wages while increasing wages, right? So this is, uh, this is something that potentially, potentially uh, other companies and, and uh, organizations may follow. Uh, I know that a lot of folks are excited about it, but it is is specifically something for their production workers. So um, they reached this deal and um, uh, it, you know, the, the manufacturing groups reconsider the structure of uh, this work week. And I think that others are going to uh, follow suit Oh, this is a, um, a a big step here. It's a big step. And the move, it, it comes at a time when companies and public offices are changing how people work. And they want to impu- improve the employees' well-being, their mental health. Uh, they also want to promote company savings after uh, rising costs and, of course, after the pandemic. Now, similar four-day work week. Um, uh, uh, schemes, um, proposals uh, have been adopted in European countries. Britain um, have found that employees work more in less time. Uh, the job retention and recruitment has been improved. Sickness levels have gone down with less time in the office. So um, work less, work better. It's uh uh, some of the things that uh, folks are saying about this. Now, as it relates to uh, Lamborghini, um, this is part of a broader renegotiation uh, of a framework and a contract used for workers of CarMaker. Uh, this is a subsidiary of uh, Volkswagen, which is also um, including 500 new jobs and increases for the annual wages and further labor benefits. So uh, this is a a win for the workers. This is a win for uh, management and and ownership. And um, I just, like I said, I hope that others follow suit with this. Uh, Definitely congratulations are in order for rap superstar 50 cent. He is bringing his media company to Louisiana in a very, very favorable deal from the city of Shreveport. Now, they are going to lease a space to G-Unit Film and Television, Inc. for 30 years 
at the annual uh, rate of $2,400 with an option for an additional 15 years. So 50 Cent has acquired this 70,000 square foot studio and he's going to use it for his film and production company. Uh, that is an amazing uh, rent, $2,400. So the expected renovations are going to be uh, between one hundred and seventy and one hundred and ninety thousand dollars, the city expects that this will help revitalize the film industry in the city. So this is a big move, big move for uh, the city of Shreveport, and a big move for the mogul Fifty Cent. So the Shreveport City Council agreed to lease. What uh, was formerly known as Millennium Studios, and that is going to 50 Cent and his G-Unit film and television outfit. Um, the members voted unanimously uh, for that. Um, 50 Cent, of course, took to social media to uh, announce this great achievement. Uh, I am happy for him. Uh, and, uh, you know, he gets on social media and he, he eggs people on, he talks crazy. Uh, he has a lot of jokes, but when it comes down to business, he's making big moves, going to Louisiana, Shreveport, finding a very favorable deal. He just has to do some remodeling to this location. And I, I'm very happy for him. And I, and I hope that he continues to evolve. And I hope that more importantly, Folks continue to pay attention to his moves and and uh, make the good moves their own and apply their own spin to it. Um, you can listen to the Diamond K Show. Of course, I'll be back here tomorrow on Fire TV, Radio on Fire TV. Anywhere you get your podcast, just search the Diamond K Show. Of course, on YouTube, we need you to subscribe to our channel. We are trying to build up our membership there. I drop DJ mixes there. I drop uh, my music there. Uh, episodes of this show and other shows that are on RadioOnFire.tv and On Fire TV programs are archives. So much more. New videos posted daily. YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K. You want to get in touch with me for business or booking info, DJ Diamond K at Gmail. Dot com on all social media. I am at the Diamond K Show. I'll be back here tomorrow, 6 p.m. with another episode of the show. And uh, see you guys later.